Hey all, Heretic here, and today we're talking about the Lord of Terror himself, Diablo. He is returning to the battlegrounds just for a few days, and I'm here to give you the information to help you play him a little better, or help you deal with him a little better. Let's jump right in. Let's start with his hero power, Realm of Terror. Passive every four turns, all enemies fight the Lord of Terror and your warband for loot. So what this means is every four turns, you are going to fight one person as you normally do. And if you lose that fight, that person will do damage to you as normal. Everybody else will be fighting an exact copy of your board. So your board is going to be the board you've been building, playing with just like normal. But also, it's going to have the Lord of Terror, who's going to slide in from the right whenever there's room for him. So if you've got seven minions on the board, as soon as one of them dies on the rightmost position, the Lord of Terror will spawn. So what happens is if someone manages to kill Diablo, they will receive two loot cards. These loot cards can be power-ups, secrets, you know, things to make them more powerful. Conversely, if they don't kill the Lord of Terror, Diablo himself will receive two for every person that doesn't defeat them. But if you're fighting a copy of Diablo and you do any damage, you will not do damage to Diablo. That damage is just wasted, it goes off into the void. Only the person who themselves is fighting the true Diablo will do any damage to the Diablo player. But it's very key that that Diablo player wins all of those fights. Because of those loot cards, because of those buffs and power-ups they're going to get, that is going to be the tempo that gives them the ability to tear up faster. If they already have a pair going into that turn four one, and they win pretty convincingly, it's very possible, especially if they have the triple frozen in the shop, they're just gonna go straight to take a five or if they're super greedy and have the right cards, even a six, depending what's lobby appropriate. Now the loot itself is going to scale depending on the turn you're on. So four, eight, 12, 16, every time you hit a new level with your Diablo, those Lord of Terror rewards are gonna get better. So just remember that the rewards your opponents are getting and you are getting better. So you have to be careful where you use them, especially if you're the Diablo player. You know, if you don't have anything good and it's the only thing keeping you alive, you've got to use these loot. But at the same time, if you don't need to use them and you can hang on to them for those turns, it will be a big bump. But especially between turn four and eight, if you've managed to get a good swing, it's definitely in your interest to jump ahead. Diablo's hero power is very powerful at giving early tempo, but falls off in the later game as later, these buffs, while significant and good, don't really compare to super high rolly boards that you're already running into now. So turn 12, turn 16, while these are impressive, they're not really jaw dropping. You're already seeing better things from some people high rolling. The loot cards themselves, remember, need to have room in your hand. So if you're say doing something that generates blood gems, you have a bunch of cards in your hand, maybe playing a hand murloc board, be aware that if you fill your hand with blood gems though, you're probably going to be better off with some of those at least mid-game cards you should be getting as reward for beating people. The secrets themselves can be stacked if they're from different tiers. Because the loot cards you get are random, it's very possible you get multiples of the same one. It's not uncommon to see three or four of the same exact one just show up at once. And in the case of secrets, there's no way you can stack them, so you can only play one at a time. But if you say have the four, eight, and 12 one, you can those turns stack them because you can have the different secrets because they have different names in play. So you definitely can utilize those, especially on those big turns for extra value. In minions you might want to avoid having on your board if you are playing Diablo, Monstrous Macaw and Titus. The problem with these minions are they double the death rattles. Well, this means they double the rewards you're giving to your opponent. Heaven forbid you've got kind of a beast board going, that Lord of Terror slides on, your Macaw triggers the Lord of Terror, Titus doubles those rewards, your Macaw has reborn, it happens again. You're quickly giving people win conditions, potentially the whole lobby win conditions, and that can kill yourself pretty quickly if you're having these cards in play. So definitely consider not playing them if this is the hero who you have. And if you're fighting Diablo and you somehow manage to steal the Lord of Terror, albeit with a weird Rafam hit somehow, or a radio star, something along those lines, something weird happens, you manage to sneak it out, it doesn't do anything good for you. If you put it on the board and someone manages to kill it, you're just giving them treasure. So definitely 
Don't play this if you manage to steal it. Just use it as economy. Diablo's main issue is his hero power isn't a win condition. So what you need to do is tier a little more aggressively until you can find that. If you get value, if you're sitting there on that turn four and you've got the big win, then you definitely need to jump ahead. That way you can find the cards you need so you can outscale your opponents because your hero power is just not giving you that kind of value. And what's happening to it is it's destabilizing the whole lobby because you're giving secrets to other players. All those loot cards that your opponents are getting, they're not just using it against Diablo, they're using it against each other. So the whole lobby is completely out of whack. Everyone's got things they shouldn't have, secrets, extra attack, just random things that can really make it hard to plan what you're dealing with. If someone's got a cleave and all of a sudden they've got a big buff for the cleave from one of these things, you could really mess up some people's boards because they have an expectation of, well, this is how this is gonna play out. If this is what they were doing a couple turns ago, I know what to expect. Overall, Diablo is going to win big or die fast, typically. The hero power values falls off pretty quick after turn eight. And then if they haven't found a win condition, you can murder them pretty quickly. If the person playing Diablo really low rolls or just doesn't really know what they're doing, takes too many chances, go three on three, which you don't really want to do if you're ever playing Diablo because you're weak kind of going into four. You know, these are all things you have to take into account. It depends on the skill level of your lobby. If people don't know what they're doing with Diablo and he's only out for a couple days, it's gonna take people time to learn, but you know how to use and or abuse all the things Diablo brings to the table. You definitely could take advantage and stomp some people while they're learning. And by the time they've learned it, Diablo's gone. You're all set. I hope you learned a few things today and I hope you're prepared. Diablo is the Lord of Terror, but to me, he'll always be the Lord of Hatred. I just can't stand him. Thanks for watching all. I hope you had a good time. I'll catch you next time. Later. Terror shall reign.